Welcome everyone. Today we are embarking on a significant conversation about a topic that has transformed countless lives: in vitro fertilization or IVF. To guide us through this intricate journey, we are having the privilege of having Dr. Satya Balasubramaniam, fertility specialist, Cloud9 Hospital, Srinagar, Chennai here with us today. Thank you for joining us Dr. Satya. Thank you for having me. So Dr. Satya, let's start with a fundamental question. What is IVF? So IVF in simple language is the mixing of eggs and sperms outside the body creating an embryo and replacing the embryo back into a woman's womb. Another common question is about who actually needs IVF treatment. Could you shed light on the situations or conditions where IVF becomes a viable option for couple? So IVF is commonly done in four conditions. Number 1 is when the fallopian tubes of the woman are blocked on both sides. By blocked we could mean that these tubes are damaged either by disease or by removed by surgery. The second common indication is when the male factor the sperm count or motility is very low. That's again an indication to go for IVF or its associated treatment called ICSI. The third indication is when a woman has gone through multiple rounds of intrauterine insemination which have failed that we could go for IVF. And fourth is a condition wherein a woman has ovulation problems as failed primary treatment and then going for IVF there are other indications but these are the common one that's reassuring to hear dr satya lastly i want to know that like many people wonder that whether an ivf baby is different from a baby conceived naturally could you please clarify this misconception no ivf baby is just like any other baby the incidence of twin pregnancy is significantly higher in ivf babies because we tend to transfer two embryos but other than that the babies are no way different from regular natural conception babies thank you dr satya for demystifying these myths and clarifying the concerns i'm sure the va- your inputs are very valuable to the viewers Dr Satya has expertly demystified IVF clarifying common misconceptions and concerns. Now let's move on to understanding the different stages of IVF and the processes involved. So Dr Satya, to understand the stages of IVF and the processes involved, could you outline the primary stages involved in the IVF process? So the IVF process has basically four steps. The first step is to help the woman to grow multiple eggs and towards this end the woman has to take injections for up to 10 days. The second step is once the eggs have grown and matured then we have to collect these eggs. So that procedure is called egg collection and it's done under anesthesia and usually done transvaginally. The third step is to get the sperms into the eggs or to mix the eggs and the sperms that is done in the IVF lab by scientists called embryologists four to five days later once the embryos are formed we choose the best amongst them to replace back into a woman's uterus and this step is called as embryo transfer so these are the four steps and usually 15 days after the embryo transfer we'll know whether the woman has conceived or not thank you for providing an overview dr satya thank you Many people wonder how long does each stage of an IVF take. So could you please give us a clarity on that? So as I told you the first step of taking injections to grow multiple eggs takes roughly about 10 days. It could be a day more or less in each patient. The second step of egg collection takes about 15 to 30 minutes. The third step of growing the embryo in the lab is a 5 to 6 day process and the embryo transfer hardly takes 2 minutes to do. That's helpful to know Dr Satya. Moving on. What are the key considerations that couples should be aware of before getting started with the IVF process? So one should always know the uh, possibilities and limitations of any treatment that one is going to go in for. The possibility is that the infertility will come to an end and we'll have a baby in hand. The limitations is that no treatment is perfect. The success rates of IVF are around 40 to 50% per attempt. So even if you have the world's best embryos the chance of it implanting is not more than 50% in one cycle. So we need to keep our hopes at that level. Number 2 is if an embryo fails to implant the first question the patients want to know is why the embryo did not implant. Unfortunately there's no way of our knowing what happened to the embryo after the embryo went inside. So that will remain a mystery at least for the moment. 
So one has to accept that we would not be able to find the cause for failure unless the embryo transferred itself was weak. The third thing is they should be aware that even if pregnancy test is positive, sometimes things may go wrong. For example, there could be an early miscarriage or a pregnancy in the fallopian tube. That's very important inputs. So, is there any discomfort or pain associated with IVF? Can you share some insights on what to expect during this process of IVF? During the 10 days of injections, the process of injection is essentially well tolerated by women. Most of the injections are like pen devices, like taking insulin. The complaints are quite less in terms of pain. There is a general feeling amongst women that this process is tiring, especially during the injections. Other than that, there may be allergic reactions to the injections, especially around the abdomen, for some women, not all. As the ovaries become larger, there may be pain in the lower abdomen, which is usually relieved by taking regular painkillers like paracetamol. And rarely in 3 out of 100 women, there may be a condition called ovarian hyperstimulation. This happens when more than 15 or 20 eggs are collected. This leads to enlargement of ovaries and pain, fluid collection in the abdominal cavity sometime around the lungs. And there may be pain and breathing difficulty associated with now we know what to expect, especially for the women then when they are going through the process of IVF. Thank you, Dr. Satya, for your expertise on the stages of IVF. For our viewers, if you have further clarifications or need guidance, please feel free to reach out to Dr. Satya Balasubramaniam, Fertility Specialist, Cloud9 Hospital, Tinagar, Chennai. Remember, for having a successful IVF journey, understanding the process is the key step. Thank you for joining us today.